What up is Marcus with Dynasty Football Dads. We're going to be doing the biggest Dynasty sophomore running, running back to sell and the biggest one to buy. We're going to be doing a double dip here. Uh, but if you're new to the channel, you might be wondering why. Well, if you're actually old to the channel, you'd be wondering why in the world I have a Vikings uh, football with uh, some football players here. Simon Harrison and Sandejo here. It's because this is the first Patreon giveaway. So we actually do We're actually still doing the giveaway 1K when we hit 1K, we're going to be giving away a Jerry Judy free sign jersey. But uh, Patreon, this is right now down to two people. Uh, but if we have more Patreon giveaway or more Patreon supporters, then we'll be giving this football away here when I hit that special mark. I'm not going to tell you what that mark is yet. I'm just saying that if we get more Patreon supporters, we'll be giving that away. And we're going to be doing better and bit bigger and better, hopefully, giveaways here with Patreon because, of course, uh, when you have money coming in, then you're able to give more out to those supporters. So now what you're all here for, the biggest buy, the biggest sell. Uh, and I feel like these situations are very, very, like, kind of similar in, in, in respects besides the rankings. Uh, if I gave you this stat line, 145, 625, and 2, or 138, 624, and 5. That's almost identical. Both over 600 yards, right around that 140 carry mark. Touchdowns can be fluky. Uh, you'd be going yourself, yeah, they're pretty equal. The difference is, is RB8 and RB44. That is the Dynasty Startup Rankings. And if you know who that is, that would be, congratulations, Cam Akers and Daryl Henderson. Uh, I think Cam Akers is the biggest sell. And it's because there's a couple different reasons. One, Stafford. Everyone's all like, oh my goodness, Stafford's going to be so good for the for the, for the for the backfield there. You know what he's really good at doing? He's really good at having really good wide receiver weapons and really good tight end weapons and utilizing that in his offense. I mean, there's a reason why Detroit didn't have a thousand yard rusher for an eternity underneath Matthew Stafford. And, and Matthew Stafford, Cam Akers, yes, he could get all the opportunity in the world. He could. Daryl Henderson is a really, really good backup, and I think will definitely split time with Cam Akers. We're not going to see Cam Akers hit 80, 90% of snaps. Sean McVay has shown that he is the kind of hot hand approach. He's also a can play with two, two running backs in the backfield. He did that with Daryl Henderson and Malcolm Brown, and then he kind of did that with Daryl Henderson and Malcolm Brown and Cam Akers, a kind of a triple effecta. It doesn't matter to him. He's going to be utilizing. Uh, he's going to be utilizing both these running backs. And, and the big difference is like Cam Akers, RB eight. You are you are passing above so many good running backs, and that's my big issue. Is you are passing above Dobbins and Swift and Ceh and Joe Mixon and right around even that Chubb area. And it's like I'd rather have those running backs easily over Cam Akers. Cam Akers, my biggest downfall, and this this is an argument that you can definitely have against me, is I just don't think he is an elite, talented running back. We've seen him trend. Oh my goodness, Florida State's offense was horrible, but he was a quarterback. He does have poor vision at times, and I think that that gets him into trouble. Uh, David Montgomery's had those issues, and so we can potentially say that Cam Akers ha could have some issues. With, with that offensive line, that is not amazing. I don't think that offensive line is amazing. And so he's still going to have some of those issues. And yes, they utilized him real, uh, a ton at the end of the year. Uh, but they didn't. But Daryl Henderson had some injuries as well. So you're looking at, well, what, where can we find value here? And I think Daryl Henderson being at RB44 is a really good value pick because there it's easily that Cam Akers could be RB18, RB15. Uh, he has a chance of being a, a top 10 RB. He totally could. If Daryl Henderson gets hurt and they really ride Cam Akers, he could be a really uh, he could be utilized with usage. But talent wise, I think that that's where he's going to struggle. In we even saw like some of the big games he had. His average, like if you watch the games, his average wasn't amazing. Uh, there was I, I think it was against the Patriots. I believe there's one game that he did really really well at, and of course he was on my bench. But that is the, the ultimate where Cam Akers is. He's not a top five talented running back in his own class, which is hard to put him at RB8 dynasty wise. And if you're wondering who the top five would be, uh, I would put Swift, Dobbins, uh, Swift, Dobbins, Taylor, Gibson. Well, there's already, I think that's a four right there. So he, and I guess the top five, I think CH is right in that kind of Akers mix. 
talent wise, but I think CEH has a ton uh, the best situation. And that's and he's gonna be utilized better in the passing game, which he's a ton better than Cam Akers in the passing game. That's something that Cam Akers also struggles in, is the receiving game. He doesn't catch the ball a lot. That being said, he is my RB18 in Dynasty. It's not something crazy. And I think 8 to 18 is not a horrible big difference. I do think there is a little bit of a tier breakthrough there. Uh, but I think Cam Akers being drafted at RB8, that's your number one running back in a lot of cases. And that's just, that's really hard to, to swallow that one. I, I, I And we're going to go through somebody that had 140 yards less in his in his rookie year that is being drafted at RB34 compared to RB8, and you could argue has a very similar situation. And that is what we're looking for. We're looking for value. You, when you're drafting Cam Akers, you're not getting value. You're not you're not getting higher upside than RB8. You're, you're drafting at the peak. It, there's chances that he'll go below that. I, the, the situation there gets all kind of like, oh my goodness, he he could be in the Rams offense. He could be Todd Gurley. Matthew Stafford is a different type of quarterback. We don't we see Theo Riddick in the passing game, but I mean, ultimately, you don't see many good Detroit running backs with Matthew Stafford. So is that Matthew Stafford or is that poor Detroit coaching? And there's a big, huge kind of like question mark around Cam Akers of like, well, will he succeed? Or will Daryl Henderson be that kind of constant split with him? But let's go with the, the guy who had 112 carries, so a little bit less carries than Cam Akers, 481 yards and four touchdowns. The starter on that team had 156 carries, 687 yards and two touchdowns. These are RB34 and RB42. Why I say they're similar situations, I'll get to who it is. Why they say it's similar situations is because this situation is kind of like, a, well, they're really close to A and B. Like we don't, we we do know who the starter is in in, in the, as a Ram. We know that Cam Akers is the starter and should be the starter. In this situation, it's a little bit more muddied. But the the thirty four, I think, he's gone almost too far in disrespect, and that is Zach Moss. So Zach Moss is RB thirty four, one hundred and twelve carries, four hundred eighty one yards, four touchdowns. An interesting stat, he started zero games last year. He had 13 actually games that he played in and zero starts. So one of the big things that Zach Moss struggled with was injuries. Is Singletary the starter? Is he not? I think looking, the Buffalo was rumored to have, going to be drafting one of these uh, running back. They didn't. Zach Moss, pre, 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 I guess you could say 2020 season was argued to be a RB6, RB7 in that 2020 class. So he has a talent. He has a talent. He was drafted in round three. The biggest question mark, I think, is going to be, is Zach Moss going to stay healthy? And I think you are drafting him at his kind of baseline. I think the worst thing you're going to get is you're going to get a couple more games play out of him. He's either, the worst, I guess you could say he's going to get hurt. But if he does play, if he does play, the worst case scenario you think you're going to get out of him is probably some like, 800 yard season you're probably going to see a very similar path with uh ronald jones rojo you're going to probably see that kind of similar path that you could see with him zach moss i think is a, a talented running back not a, i almost said very talented i think he's a talented running back and i think the question is honestly at rb 34 and 42 i'm probably just trying to get both of these players because i think one of them is gonna is gonna bust up break out i think one of these is going to break out so my biggest you can't i i, I almost say under on these undervalued running backs it's hard to be like well i want deandre swift or i want antonio gibson they're not being undervalued at this point almost everyone is being valued to where this should be so we have to find somebody that is actually undervalued and that is zach moss at rb34 and that rb34 is sometimes a hot he's actually rose up a little bit to get to 34 i think he is at least uh seven eight spots higher and and, and that's and that's just trying to Again, trying to predict the future. Rookie year, I understand. It wasn't so good. And I even was somebody that wanted Antonio Gibson over Zach Moss. I, it was very close to it, but I wanted Antonio Gibson over Zach Moss. Just because I, I liked the weapon of Antonio Gibson. I thought he was cool. I thought he was running back wide receiver. I was more tantalized by his talent than I was maybe the actual NFL production. And it actually worked out. But Zach Moss is somebody, is somebody that definitely can have the talent enough to be a starter in this league for the next two years. We just got to figure out where we can get that. Because honestly, when you're getting into RB30s, you're not going to be finding it. You're just not. Like, you're, you're not going to be finding it unless you get somebody that gets hurt before them. And this is a situation where there might not be an injury and he could still be the starter. And at 34 and being in a good offense, I understand Josh Allen is the RB1 on that team. But in that situation, I think that is where we go. All right? So, again, Vikings, just signed Jersey.
<laughs> signed jersey, signed football. This is a football, football. All right, so we'll be giving away that on Patreon here soon. Yeah, maybe soon, hopefully soon. If not, it's just gonna be between Craig and Mike. And we'll stay tuned, Craig and Mike. <laughs> All right, peace out. See you tomorrow. Now turn up.